have the HIV interface. Depending on the microcontroller, they'll have those. Radios will have different data debugs, depending on what they're using. Does that answer your question? Uh, okay. The question was, are they subject to differential power analysis attacks? Um, some are. I mean, they, you know, if, if you can name a vulnerability, you know, generally you're going to test for it. Usually what I do is I prioritize. I might have a particular thing that I'm going after. For this, I'm specifically concerned with the optical port. So I was going off that. I wasn't doing firmware analysis at this portion of the port. It depends on what type of system we're doing. So we prioritize. Does that answer your question? All right, back to memory components. So we, have, we understand the memory components. We understand how they um, uh, how they communicate. So we just get devices that communicate with them. The Arvark device um, communicates with uh, some very easy. Uh, it's very simple. It will power the, the uh, memory component and pull the data off, and then you have a data file. Uh, for the ball grid array components, it's a little more complicated. It's actually you know, more expensive. And that's the uh, Zeltec on the, on the right-hand image. Uh, but I, you know, and one of the things I want to point out is the Zeltec alone is expensive, but if they haven't made an adapter for it, they're about $500 a piece. Okay? But the fact that I can actually call them and say, you don't have this, can you make it, and they send it to me within two weeks, that means it's not that hard. And I can pull, you know, it just makes it really easy to pull stuff off of those components that are bought for array. And then, of course, perhaps good speed has been kind enough to do a lot of research into the embedded devices. So he's got the, his custom uh, good fed out there that everybody can get if you find him. I was actually hoping that I could find him and get some boards up here, pass out or at the Q&A. So if he shows up, you know, I have some there. But you, all you have to do is contact him. Travis, you know, look, uh, look up the good fed. And you can write your own custom uh, uh, extractors and get memory off of things that are strange and uh, don't have a, um, a commercial tool. But once we get the data, what is it? You know, it's just like any other file system. And uh, but there's no pointer saying that, okay, this is the actual file or the data that you're interested in. You can run strings on it, yeah. You're going to get some interesting information out of there. You might even locate something, you know, just by perusing it. Oh, so what I turn to is I turn to the communication standards, the ANSI C12 stuff that we'll be talking about in just a second. But the reason why I do that is because, my, because these embedded devices want to be efficient. You know, if things are going off a radio, so they've got timing issues. Uh, they, don't got a lot of, they don't have a lot of CPU power. So sometimes they just write straight to memory. So you can use these to help you understand how they are and maybe try to locate certain things within that, uh, uh, within that memory or that file that you pulled out. So if we can't find anything, nothing pops out of this um, or from our memory. Uh, and the reason why I do that first you know, even though it's far, I might not get as far, it's the easiest thing to do. So I grab that data, something might pop out, um, but then now I can start turning to data in motion. Because, as I mentioned, you know, the most, they're only going to pass the most important data generally. Okay, so you can focus things on, they focus in on that data very quickly by monitoring data in motion. But you don't have just component to component communication. Meters are made up of metrology boards which count. And then they're also made up of network interface parts. And those have to communicate. And what's great about it, what we figured out, is that the NIC generally has to authenticate to the metrology board in order to get that information. So now it has to pass the security codes across those lines. And that's what we're, that's what we're going to focus on. Focus. This is an example of tapping uh, pins on memory components. Uh, hopefully you guys have seen this before, but if you haven't, I'll describe it. Uh, basically, in the, uh, the left-hand image there, uh, that's a logical analyzer. Uh, I, I prefer this to lay a logical analyzer. It's small, it's easy to carry, uh, and it works really well. It's got some really good analyzers you'll see in a second. Uh, but basically, it's just a, you know, we tap into the pins. We use the microgrippers to monitor each one of the pins so that we know what's going across those pins at any one point in time. And actually, what the image that you see right here is the microcontroller driving the radio, which is small chip because the radio doesn't have enough memory to, to to keep that. So the microcontroller has to manage it. It has to send it to the next hop. The, the next hop. Who understands frequency hop? Okay, if you monitor it, if you monitor these lines, 
you save them off to a file, now you have the hopping pattern for that particular radio. Now you can start using that for your analysis into other things like, you know, refining patents, understanding how they're uh, uh, generating that hopping pattern, and if you can do that, now you're getting into the next phase that I really want to get into, and we're already working on that. Uh, the, the right hand side, if I can't get the microgrippers on there, if it's just line like the Bogger array components, or they're really small, I can't get the grippers to grip onto there, then I'll tap with the, the, the hypothermic cable. Okay. Um, it, it's really good because it's got that point and a grip on there. Okay. But the problem with both of these, most of these things is, is that if I tap this with my elbow or my knee when I'm standing up to go do something, all of that stuff pops up. No matter how aggravating it is, doing, doing this for trying to get those hypodermic needles on there for 30 minutes just to look up, bump it, and have to do it all again. So it's really tough. So what we do is we look for debugging pads. Most of the debugging pads are for JTAG interfaces, you know, to uh, uh, reprogram microcontrollers to, uh, uh, so that the developers have an easy way to push firmware up into the memory components. But when we go from board to board, sometimes we have those as well. And the board to board is going to show the communication that's passing between the NIT and the metrology board. So we solder on that. We pull those lines out, of, out onto our breadboard. And now we've got a more persistent connection. And we can put our logical analyzer on there. And if we understand how it's communicating, we can get devices and, and, and connect to those lines as well. So in the, in the right hand image, you see my logical analyzer. So I'm still analyzing the lines. But I'm also putting an FTDI chip in there because I know, I know it does serial communication. And now I can use this to